Survivor Series and this year it'll be in Vancouver British Columbia another Canadian show which I think is awesome so I thought I'm gonna finish off the year series I know I said that about SummerSlam but I'm also gonna finish the Survivor Series series off seeing as how I did a lot in 2016 just go watch that well it'll be a different perspective here obviously including tonight's topic and let's just say it was rose colored glasses because this was kind of the shits it wasn't it wasn't look the card changed a lot because of a lot of things that have happened and yeah so no dark show you have billy gunn who defeated brooklyn brawler i i tried to get sources to watch this show disclaimer and couldn't find a lot so yeah anyways billy gunn won this match and then on with the show So you have Team Razor versus Team IRS to start the show. And originally it was supposed to be Razor and Marty Jannetty versus Mr. Perfect and 123K. And somewhere along the way, Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning got released. And Kind of like, yeah, that's kind of weird. I, like the year before, it was supposed to be the Macho Man Randy Savage and Ultimate Warrior taking on Ric Flair and Razor Ramon and Jim Helwig got released and this year, yeah. It was just insane. But this was a 4 and 4 match, so that's cool. Survivor Series. You have the one, two, three kid, Sean Waltman. You have Marty Jannetty. Mr. Perfect was indeed replaced by Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, and yeah. he got uh -huh. And they defeated Team IRS, which was Adam Bomb, Diesel, or an Shyster, and Model Rick Martel. Although, was he the model at this point? I'm not sure. You have Harvey Wimpleman. In their corner, but have Randy Savage eliminated by Diesel, and then you have IRS pin Randy Savage, and yeah, this was interesting. It's very cool to see Randy in this match. I don't think he wrestled that much longer after this. I mean, there was a, a short stint he had where he was told to go on commentary because he was 40. So, 
he eventually did wrestle Crush WrestleMania 10 the following year. So yeah, anyways, then you have IRS who was eliminated by Razor. Razor got counted out. Okay. Then you have one, two, three kid eliminating Rick Martel and Marty Jannetty eliminating Adam Bomb, which, yeah, the sole survivors of this match. One, two, three kid, Marty Jannetty. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess. You know, like, despite the changes to this match, it wasn't really a huge deal, in my opinion. I wish I could have got this match on a highlight thing, but it is what it is, honestly. But, I mean, it doesn't look like it was a bad match. I like a lot of these competitors here. Then we go on to the Far and Far Survivor Series. And that's how this match was supposed to be the Hart family versus Jerry Lawler and his knights. Now, Jerry got himself into a little trouble. He had got released for a while. And Shawn Michaels, who I think at this point was also in trouble. But anyways, he obviously had his thing with Brett. Especially last year, the champion versus champion. But yeah, so it was Shawn Michaels with the Black Knight, the Blue Knight, the Red Knight, and Shawn Michaels. So, well, this was an interesting match. Of course, this was the infamous Shawn Michaels bumping Brett off the apron. And the Hart Brothers basically tending to Brett and Owen got pinned by Sean and so well all these so I mean yeah you look at these guys you got Stu Hart who obviously the Hart Dungeon you have Stampede Wrestling which ended a few years prior so these guys I didn't know Keith or Bruce obviously at that time but yeah so Brett ended up winning for his team. Owen came back all booby faced and argued with Brett. This would be the starting to Owen and Brett feuding and they would have their match the year after WrestleMania ten. So pretty cool. And I was right, obviously, talking about Smoky Mountain Wrestling in the early 90s. You got very cool, their collaboration with WWF now. I never watched Smoky Mountain Wrestling at that time. I mean, I was eight years old, so I'm like, oh, no, uh, nine years old, actually. And I'm like, yeah, I never actually seen a Smoky Mountain match up at that point, but I knew the Heavenly Bodies and the Rock and Roll Express and all those guys. Hell, even Glenn Jacobs. But you have the Heavenly Bodies, Jimmy Del Rey and Tom Pritchard with Jim Cornette, and they defeated the Rock and Roll Express, of course, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, who were the champions at the time, and the yeah, Heavenly Bodies got the win, Taking Smoky Mountain Take Team Championships and yeah, I wish I would have paid more attention to that, but I definitely remember those guys. So and I wish I could find a match, but I'm pretty sure it was cool. So this seemed like a dumpster fire. Another Survivor Series match. Four doinks. You got the Bushwhackers, Men on a Mission with Oscar, 
who defeated Bam Bam Bigelow, Bastion Burger, and the Head Shrinkers. So, yeah, I guess this was the comic relief match. I mean, Team Doink, or the four Doinks, and their regular wrestling. Like, you knew it was Manana Mission and the Bushwhackers and them doing this, but they had the Doink the Clown makeup on and the green hair, so... Yeah, all four of those guys won, and yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, and it's just like, I mean, yeah, that's all I can say is, yeah, and I know all of them four wrestlers are no longer with us, so, oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, Bam Bam Bigelow and Alpha, who was in the other corner. So. And then you have the last match. And then you have the All-Americans, which had Lex Luger, the Steiner Brothers, and the Undertaker. Who defeated the foreign fanatics? So, of course, you got the Quebecers. Well, actually, Quebecer Jacques from Montreal, Ludwig Borga from Finland, and Yokozuna built from Japan. And Crush. <whistles> Hawaiian Crush. So, their corner was Jim Cornette, Johnny Polo, and Mr. Fuji. Now, the rumor was Undertaker, so they all had American gear, all American, like, Old Glory-inspired gear. I guess Mark Calloway thought it was weird and a mystique of his character, so he came out in the, I don't know what you call it, the flag that had the white stars in a circle. So, yeah. Uh, you have Rick, who was eliminated by Ludovic in the pinfall. Crush got counted out. Yay. You have Shock, who got eliminated by Lex Luger. And Scott got pinned by Yokozuna. And then you have a double count out with Yokozuna and The Undertaker. And. Of course, Lex pinned Ludwig Borga, so... Alright. <sighs> Jesus. I mean... I always say that 93 was a good year for me, I guess. But it was a good year in general. But I guess when you look at the WWF, it was almost like... I just don't get it. Because this isn't the first time this has happened, obviously, to talk about Survivor Series 92, but you look at this card and it's like, understandably, it's always going to be card subject to change, but at the same time, it's like, why? Circumstances happen, I understand that, but, you know, it is what it is. And I mean, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Heading, would come back in a referee capacity at WrestleMania 10, so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this was interesting, and yeah, we will uh, talk to you later. We'll see what other show I can talk about, but I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, yeah. So you know that them cutting WCW was a long time coming. I don't think that's the case at all. You can look at some of his earlier interviews that he